Defense contractor Lockheed Martin is looking to drone racing for the next advance in artificial intelligence. Here's Lockheed Martin Chief Technology Officer Kaoki Jackson to talk about this from TechCrunch Disrupt. This is an autonomy and AI challenge and bringing that to the world of high-speed flight. So we're partnering with NVIDIA and the Drone Racing League to compete essentially the best AIs against the best human drone pilots. So for anybody that's seen drone racing on TV, we're raising the bar there and we're raising the excitement level. We're challenging people out here at the conference today and around the world to develop the technology that will now allow an autonomous drone to meet and beat the very best human pilots in a complicated drone race. So this, there will be no human intervention here? So once it goes, it has to work on its own. It's what we call edge computing and using that edge AI capability to navigate and complete the course as fast as possible. And these are speeds upwards of 80 miles an hour. So talk to us about what kind of tracks you're going to use and, and the technical challenges of actually making this possible. At this point. Yeah. So a couple of things, I mean, like I said, this is all about putting really complex and high powerful, high power computing into a very compact, lightweight, low size weight and power uh, device at the edge. And so these are small drones, right, moving at very high speeds. They're going into, if you've seen on TV, these drone racing courses, these are complicated 3D courses where they have to maneuver around obstacles and they have to be able to complete the course in the fastest time possible. Ultimately, we're going to compete these machines and the AIs that the folks out here develop against those very top human drone racing pilots. And what kind of tracks are you using? Is this normal tracks? Yeah, so we're going to use uh, tracks comparable to what the actual pilots are using in Drone Racing League today. Lockheed Martin likes to say it's been in Silicon Valley since before Silicon Valley was Silicon Valley, but some say this might be an odd fit for a defense company. How do you respond to that? Well, again, the challenges that we face, whether it's defense-related uh, challenges or it's putting people back to the moon and out to Mars, these are incredibly complex challenges. They're very, very difficult missions and very difficult environments. They require a whole range of technologies. And so to meet those mission challenges, we need to be bringing in not just the very best talent from around the area here, but we're looking to partner with companies that have new ideas, whether it's an autonomy and AI, sensors, machine learning, quantum information sciences. These are the technologies that are going to bring the next advances to these mission capabilities. So do you think you'll find technology that Lockheed Martin could help develop? Absolutely, and we're looking to work with and to collaborate with small companies companies through large companies. We're actually out here on the floor today at TechCrunch. We've got representatives from our Lockheed Martin Ventures Fund, this is a $200 million venture fund, who are looking for companies that have commercial and interesting technologies that are going to apply to this whole range of challenges from undersea to deep space. So, you know, we talk a lot about self-driving cars, but, you know, in reality, they're probably a long way off. Are we farther along when it comes to flocks of drones that can be controlled by, you know, a piloted plane, um, you know, with or without human interaction? Well, let me give you just a couple of examples, and I'll use one in the military. We actually, there, you'll recall a few years ago, there was a big problem with improvised uh, explosive devices arming troops in Afghanistan. Our engineers said, hey, we think we have technology that can deal with that. And we ended up deploying two autonomous cargo helicopters, KMAX helicopters. They did over 1,700 missions, autonomously delivered over 4 million pounds of food, supplies, and cargo. And those are the kinds of capabilities that exist today. And then on the commercial side, we're actually developing what we call a matrix technology. Think autonomous, full-scale helicopters. We've been doing that for the past five years for things like operating in zero-zero weather conditions in oil platforms in the North Sea. We're being able to autonomously detect a forest fire, send a helicopter out to rescue somebody, and another helicopter out with a water bucket to put the fire out.